All right, official now. Wait, what? We're officially in the Los Angeles section of WrestleMania 2 and we're still going back to New York? If we were just going to keep going back to New York all the time, then why didn't we just have the entire show hosted here? Holy shit, let's start off this counter with 50 cents. And holy crap, there's not that many people hanging around. They probably got bored out of their minds with two hours of nothing. I don't blame them for walking out if they did. Adonis! Adorable Adrian will take Hercules Hernandez is probably like, are you guys ever going to stop talking and let me compete? I'm ready to go here. <laughs> Whoops, Bell is wrong. Fuck the introductions, folks. It's time for the action to start. Wonder if the ring announcer is going to get knocked over before he has a chance to leave. <laughs> There's no commentary for the first bit of this match, probably because the production team forgot to turn on their microphones. Damn. Steamboat a chance in the beginning. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat stumbled his way across the ring just to lay his head on the turnbuckle and take a nap. Probably got tired with waiting all that time. This shot is creepy because you can briefly see the image of someone standing in the interview area staring right into the camera. This looks like a scene from a horror movie. <laughs> Elvira's very delayed reaction to Ricky Stebo connected a chop to Hercules Hernandez. Please just give me something good tonight. Something. <laughs> Serious question. Why is Lord Alfred Hayes' microphone so far away from him? I can hardly hear what he's saying at all. Is Jesse Ventura pulling a prank on him or something? But what he obviously thought was, oh, literally clotheslining him. I don't know what match Jesse the Body Ventura is watching, but it's obviously not this one, as Hercules clearly connected a flapjack to Ricky on the ropes, not a clothesline. First a sin to Elvira for delayed reactions, a sin to Alfred for being too far away from his microphone, and now a sin to Jesse for incorrectly stating a move that just took place. Holy shit, all the commentators got sinned in a row during the first match. I just realized that every time Ricky Steamboat goes to turnbuckles, he seems to enjoy the softness, which makes him forget what's going on in the match. Oh, I don't know. Maybe a splash since Hercules is on the top rope and Ricky is down on the canvas. Just a freaking guess. Let's get the official word. I guess you could say a post-match assault on the referee. Hercules loses fair and square and chooses to take it out on the referee. Seen that film many times before. Also, even long after the match is over, Hercules Hernandez is still standing in the ring pacing. This goes on for quite some time. I even had to attach a bicycle helmet to my head so that it wouldn't hurt as much when I face palm to these cringe moments. Rumors circulated that the pay-per-view had actually stopped broadcasting because they couldn't get Hercules out of the ring and had to resort to cutting the feet until he was gone. Or maybe this is another arena entirely and Hercules is still in the previous one. Even long after Uncle Elmer is in the ring ready to go, Adrian Adonis leaves the ring and walks around the outside. We're over two hours into the show and on the third section of WrestleMania. Nothing has been fun to watch so far, so stop the pain! Bouncing around like a ping pong ball! Big Uncle Elmer punches Adrian Adonis in the face one time and that's enough to knock Elmer over, somehow. Elmer threw that so hard he fell- <sighs> I don't even know what I'm watching anymore. Is this a wrestling event or a dizziness competition? <laughs> Fucking what? If getting softly thrusted like that is enough to send Adrian Adonis over the top rope like that, I wonder how he'd react to a missile dropkick from the top rope. Probably get sent to New York where he competed in that section of WrestleMania. You know what sucked about Adrian's leap off the ropes? The camera was focusing on Jimmy Hart the entire time and we only saw the move hit. We never got to see the leap. The only good part of this match was sadly never shown. Such a shame. And another post-match assault. Too late, though. I'm just ready for this to be over so I can lay down and rest from the trauma of sitting WrestleMania 2. WrestleMania 2! Hulkamania running wild! Hey, Jimmy Hart, can you shut off your megaphone for a second? I'm trying to listen to Hulk Hogan's interview. The one thing that always annoyed me about the early days of wrestling was the non-stop background noises interfering with what we're trying to hear on TV. Well, we're back here at Terry Funk is probably pissed off at the ring announcer because he believes the microphone is what's making the annoying noise. You might want to take a look at your manager for a second. Time. Yo, Jimmy, shut off your megaphone. We can't hear the damn ring announcer over that. Holy crap, that is so annoying. Oh, well, here is the manager, the mouth. Jimmy Hart is being introduced while the cameras and graphics are focusing on Terry Funk. WWF may want to hire better production crew just in case this keeps up. Damn, I wonder what stopped Junkyard Dog from attacking Haas Funk. Sure as hell wasn't the referee holding him back because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I threw a chair in there too if somebody walked in with a big chain. Terry Funk was about to throw the chair into the ring but then got pissed off at the concrete floor when it started taunting him about the way his beard looks. Also, the annoying ass kissing commentary of Jesse the Body Ventura. Awesome and legendary as he is, the constant kissing ass to the bad guys really agitates me. Alright, that was hilarious. I gotta take a sin off for the way Terry Funk tried to attack Junkyard Dog and ended up flipping himself over the top rope into the ring instead. What do you know? I guess epic fails do have the good moments. 
into the ring and both the Funk. Why is the referee trying to pull Tito Santana back into the ring when neither him nor Terry Funk was the legal man? If anything, who cares if they fight outside? As long as they're not in the ring where Junkyard Dog and Haas Funk are the legal competitors. And Funk Terry Funk probably sensed the center mover from his previous fail on the ropes and figured some dumbass idiot named Christian Miracle would remove another sin. Well, that dumbass says no. Hey. Yeah, he is. He definitely won't. Perhaps the reason Terry Funk went in and out of retirement in the later years is because of all the times Junkyard Dog whacked his head on pretty much every turnbuckle in this one match. Here, Jesse. Whatever the hell caused that audio fizzling sound? Did Jesse Ventura accidentally step on the wire connecting to his microphone or something? Wrong. Terry Funk was clearly making sure Haas Funk's legs were set free from the top rope so that no additional damage could be caused on his partner. If Terry was trying to hang on, that would end up giving Tito Santana the advantage. Well, I'll say that for even after Tito was back into the ring, the referee continued his count out on Junkyard Dog, even though there's no reason to count him out at this time. At the table, you can't be biased. Jesse Ventura, the most biased commentator at the announce table, is lecturing Elvira about how to not be biased while on commentary for wrestling events. What? Damn it, this right Terry Funk spends more time getting chucked over the top rope than he does actually competing in this match. He would totally suck at battle royals. Tito Santana actually believes that he can win this match with a figure four leg lock despite both him and Haas Funk not being the legal wrestlers. It's as if everyone forgets how tag team matches are supposed to go at this time. Funny enough, I said this exact same sin in the second section. Victory by means of using an illegal weapon behind the referee's back is always a sin. Well, at least there wasn't any biting like there was in the last two sections. I hope. Jesse. Oh, now I get why Terry was always throwing himself out of the ring. He was totally wasted throughout the entire match and believed he could fly. We are in Hulk Hogan's private gym. Not so private anymore, given you just revealed it to the entire world. Whoopsie, right, Mean Gene? Also, obviously, this was pre-recorded due to Mean Gene Okerlund being in the Chicago section of WrestleMania 2, but I find it funny how it looks like he teleported from Chicago to Los Angeles just to conduct an interview with Hulk Hogan. What kind of Doctor Strange magic is going on here? Previously on WWF. Well, if you're not still experiencing pain back there. No, I'm just playing around to make it seem like I'm wearing these bandages around my midsection for entertainment purposes. No shit, I'm still in pain, brother. Also, well done, Mean Gene. You just exposed that Hulk Hogan's injury is still physically affecting him to King Kong Bundy, who no doubt is watching this video as he prepares to compete at the Steel Cage Bane event. Bobby the Brain, King Kong Bundy, we're the next heavyweight champions of the world. King Kong Bundy doesn't realize that Bobby the Brain Heenan can't also be the world heavyweight champion due to not legally participating in the cage match. New York is still a thing here? Come on, they were finished over two hours ago. What's the point of this? It's time for the main event of, without a doubt, the worst WrestleMania of all time. Tradition continues where the introduction of guest ring announcers, timekeepers, and referees takes longer than the actual match itself. I'm just ready for this to be over, honestly. Actor Ricky Schroeder was introduced as the guest timekeeper of this main event and was in his position, but we gotta wait while he figures out where to enter the cage just to pose. <laughs> And then Hulk Hogan accidentally ripped the cage off its hinges, rendering the match completely useless. Oh well, good night everybody, just kidding. Back into the cage. Off the ropes. Back. I get that Hulk Hogan has a hell of a punch, but um, all that running off the ropes just to hit the same punch you've been throwing naturally? I don't think that's gonna put down King Kong Bundy. You may want to try something else. Actually, that kick didn't look a little low. If anything, that kick looked like it missed King Kong Bundy completely. Oh, it's taking off more clothes! I just might have to throw in 15 cents for that dumbass comment by Elvira. Oh, he's taking off more clothes. That's Hulk Hogan's bandages, you stupid dumbass. Ain't no way King Kong Bundy wanted to get kinky with Hulk Hogan here. <laughs> that just might be the worst punches to the head. Hulk Hogan's not even trying to look like he's causing damage to Bundy's bloodied up head. Why did they stop this? Shut the fuck up. This steel cage match has either been Hulk Hogan punching King Kong Bundy to no effect thousands of times, or Hulk strangling Bundy with something. I am so exhausted and bored from this. WrestleMania 2 was an absolute failure for sure. Matter of fact, when I'm done with this, I'm gonna add in the combined sins of the first two sections, then multiply that number by two. Hulk Hogan just took an avalanche from King Kong Bundy at the corner, followed by a splash, and yet he gets back up without even hulking up. Hulk Hogan is the inspiration for future wrestlers to no-sell moves and make their opponents look like weaklings.